Hi, my name is Chris Waters. I go by The Architect. I have a business called Constructed Adventures where I build seemingly serendipitous, perfect days, wild, immersive treasure scavenger hunts for anyone and everyone. Uh, and I wanna help you make sure you don't mess yours up. And so today I wanna talk about weather. What better time? And I'm gonna start with some really obvious things you probably already know, and then I'm gonna kind of go into a little bit more tips and tricks and things to keep in mind and how to be prepared. So first and foremost, uh, historical weather, super obvious. I'm currently in Flagstaff, Arizona on March 1st. And so anytime in the winter, you run the risk of these kind of huge blizzards. So if you're planning something that has to happen on this day, like a surprise birthday, right? Their birthday happens every time. You're just going to have to deal with that. Or, I don't know, punt it to a later date. Heck, if you want to surprise them, do it a couple months early. They'll never see it coming. But if you are going to deal with it, obviously, you have to start preparing like the weather is pretty good. And then you're just F5ing weather.com over and over and over again as it leads up. Weather channels aren't perfect, but they do a pretty good job. We saw this giant storm coming. And, you know, at that point, you're either going to try to build something very different from your initial vision, or you're going to work with the snow and do cool things. Seattle in January, Phoenix, Arizona in August, just things you want to miss. Early on in my career, when I was doing every adventure I could, I did an adventure in Seattle in January, and it was raining sideways and terrible. The problem with inclement weather is it makes things cost more because you've lost a lot of the outdoor activities, right? You can't just hide a treasure chest by a statue in a park if there's so much snow that you can't drive to the park. Uh, and then you've got to do things indoors, which usually cost money for entry. So it's something to be aware of. If you can punt this thing down the road, um, by all means do it. If it's a, a hard set date, like a birthday, you might just have to go somewhere foreign or tropical or try something just a little bit smaller. You're gonna have to sacrifice some of the fun things climbing to the top of a mountain because it ain't happening today unless you're on a ski lift. So some other things to factor in that you're probably aware of, but might just need a reminder is inclement weather slows things down. Um, oftentimes when I'm looking at the distance of one thing to another, I'll hop on Google Maps, I'll put in the addresses, get the directions. You can actually type in the exact day and the time. It'll give you a pretty good window of like, oh, it takes 10 to 19 minutes and you can guesstimate and you can average this day out. But if there's a ton of snow, if there's a ton of rain, that might not be factored into Google Maps. So just to be aware that everything takes longer. This goes double if you live in Arizona and it's raining and everyone just freaks out because it rains like 33 days a year and nobody knows what to do. So it's just something to be aware of. If you look back on my time control video, I got contingencies on how to deal with that, but just assume that everything's gonna take a little bit longer. Another thing to factor in is player comfort. Um, this actually is a little bit less with cold weather because you can kind of bundle up and trunch through the snow and it's pretty fun. But, oh my God, I've done things in Texas and Tennessee and Arizona when you're flirting with that heat and it gets up into like the 90s and hundreds and it's just brutal. And in that case, you gotta do things indoors or if you're gonna have them outdoors, you gotta be aware of player comfort because if you're outdoors in Arizona for more than like 30 minutes at a time, you can get dehydrated, you get sunburned, and the rest of the day is completely ruined. So factor that in, that if you're gonna have something outside, obviously make sure that it's not gonna cook in the sun, but also factor in your player comfort, make sure you got water or heat or whatever else matters. Some things to be aware of that you can or can't use. Obviously with snow, you can do cool things like tracks in the snow or, uh, that's really it. But if you're going to put some type of marker, you need to make sure that it shows up and it's not like, look for the gray flowers, right? They need to be red. It needs to be obvious, especially in the wilderness, hyper obvious, because oftentimes if your player goes too far out in the wilderness, they're done. But that's in a different video. Other things to factor in, things like hydrophobic spray, where you're gonna spray a stencil on the ground and they have to pour water. There's a 50-50 chance of rain, you lose that magical moment of the letters appearing. They can still find it and it's pretty cool, but you lose the impact of like throwing a water balloon down or pouring water on the ground and having something appear. Finally, black lights in the sun. I usually recommend using black lights indoors anyway, but if it's super sunny 
and you have something hidden, they might actually be able to see the hidden message. So that's kind of the inverse. If it's too nice of a day, um, it might be hard to hide messages because it'll be too obvious. Also, if you're gonna use shadows, sometimes you see on TV shows where they're like, oh, the shadow or national treasure, right? The shadow hit this building from this spire at this time on this day. That's a pretty risky maneuver that you wanna double check the day before, but you've got to know it's gonna be sunny because if it's cloudy, you're not gonna be able to get like the sun hitting this thing that points to this that tells them where to go. Last but not least, contingencies. Have contingencies. You need to make sure, and this goes a little bit into my time control video, that you've got something that you can just pull out if it takes too long, right? If it's raining or there's a car accident or there's snow or they get stuck or they just wanna stay and have one more drink before they go out into the freezing cold or burning heat, you've got to factor that in and put kind of unnecessary steps in, or not unnecessary, but filler steps in that can just be ripped out. You can check all that out in the previous video. But the big contingency I'm talking about happens a lot with marriage proposals. I've done a lot of marriage proposals recently, and I've gotten very lucky, knock on wood, that it was just a nice day. But oftentimes when someone hires me for a marriage proposal, we want to do a sunset proposal with a beautiful backdrop. We get a photographer and we're trying to thread that needle. And so both with timing having a contingency, but also in location. With every location for a proposal, I always have a backup, an indoor safe contained location. Because as nice as a sunset, you know, outdoor with a photography proposal is, if it's thunderstorming or raining or just kind of crappy, you want to be able to have that contingency where at the second to last stop, there's two envelopes. Envelope A is your main plan. You're gonna do this wonderful cliff overlooking this. And then envelope B sends to a privately reserved room or some type of contained place that's like your rip cord, your pull in case of emergency. Um, you can also have some type of contingency that even if they get to the final location, you could just have someone there ready to usher them to this last location. So it's just something to be aware of that if it's super, super important like a proposal, Factor in weather and make sure you have contingencies. So that does it. I'm currently covered in snow. I'm gonna go play in the snow for a little bit, but I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you like it, please like and subscribe. If you are working on an adventure of your own and you just need some help from the community, head over to my subreddit or my Discord channel. They're in the, the bio uh, and you can get a lot of ideas and a lot of wonderful, helpful people. Um, I'm on there, I'm extremely active. If you really need a little bit more help, you can always hire me to consult. Um, I do hourly consulting and I'm always happy to help and assist. Or if you wanna bring in the big guns, I do travel everywhere in the world and I'm more than happy to come run the whole thing if you would like. But until next time, happy building.